Okay, um, hello Ron. All right, so the next program in chapter six is item counter. All right, so assume that a file containing a series of names, a strings is named names.txt and exists on the computer's disk. Write a program that displays the number of names that are stored in the file. Hint, open the file and read every, st every string stored in it. Use a variable to keep a count of the number of items that are read from the file. Okay, so we are going to assume that a text file exists on our computer called names.txt. Okay, it's a text file. And we are going to write a program that, that's going to basically read or tell us how many lines are in that file. All right, so since we are going, uh, the program says we should assume, actually, we don't have this file on our computer. So let's go ahead and create it. And so on my Mac, I'm going to look for text edit. It's similar to Notepad on the on Windows. Now, in, in text edit, to make sure that you go to preferences on the Mac, make sure you go to preferences, and make sure the format is set to plain text. Because if you if if it's set to rich text, then your text is going to have extra formatting behind behind the scenes that you don't see. And when you try to display your text, it's going to have that formatting, and it may look a bit, a bit messy. So make sure that it's set to plain text. On Windows, you can use Notepad. Um, okay, so I'm going to create a bunch of items, right? A bunch of um, names, random names, right? Okay, so um, oh, not random. I'm going to type in, let's say, I call. Uh, well, the, these are my friends back in um, Ghana, and my f family members and then my girlfriend okay so I have these names here I'm just I'll add, I'll add a bunch more let's see um, Kutowski, Phoebe. all right so yeah these um these are yeah these are you know people I'm, I'm close to um, not not just them though but these are people I'm, I'm actually really, really close to Okay, so I'm actually very excited to go see them in Ghana this this summer in about almost two months. And so, yeah, that's very exciting. Anyway, that was just by the way. All right, so I'm going to save this as names.txt. It's a text file, names.txt, exactly as this. And in our Python programming challenges chapter 6 folder, I'm going to create a new folder for this program, and I'll call it item counter. And I'll save this text file in that folder as names.txt now I'm saving it in that folder because that's the same folder I'm going to save the program and as long as the program and the text file exist or are both in that same folder they should be able to work with each other all right okay so I have the names.txt here I'm going to just hide it for now and then now let's write the program so let's define the main function right in most programming languages the main function is like your starting point that's where your program is it's, it's a function that has your program it's a function that's going to be called and it's a function that calls every other function right that basically has your program and so let's define a main function it's a good idea it's a good practice let's define a main function write our program in there and then when we are done let's go ahead and call the the main function All right so I'm going to define a main function and now we can write our program Right. When we are done, we have to be sure to call the main function. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is we want to open the file, right? So I'm going to call the open function, and we are opening the file in read mode. But the thing is, open function takes in two arguments, right? A couple of arguments, which is the name of the file. It takes in a couple of arguments. The name of the file, I'm going to call this one, uh, let's see. Uh oh, so we're not going to ask the user for anything. We're just going to, okay. All right, so the name of the file in this case is names.txt. And the second argument I'm going to pass in here is what mode am I opening this file in? So I'm going to, I'm opening this file in read mode. I'm going to surround it with the letter R. I'm going to sur surround the letter R with double quotations, which means read mode, right? I'm just opening this file to read from it. And you can use single quotations or double quotations. Uh, they both work. Okay, so when we call the open function, what we are doing is we are creating, once we do this, it creates a file object in memory, right? And so let's create a variable that's going to reference the file object, a variable that's going to basically store the memory location of that file object. And that's, that's just going to be a regular variable. I'm going to call this, um, 
names file. Names file is going to be a variable that's going to reference or refer to the file object that was created in memory by calling the open function. All right, so now we have the file here, okay? Pretty much, we have this variable reference in the file, the file object. All right, so the next thing we want to do is, let's see. Um, okay, so the next thing we want to do is let's, let's read the first line from the file, right? And make sure that you know, at least, and let's make sure that the first line is not empty. Basically, let's let's make sure that this file contains something in the first place, right? Now we can we know we can call read line, right? The f the function read line, and so we apply it on we apply the, the method on this object, right? Because this variable is ref re referenced in the file object, and so when you apply a function on an object, that function basically becomes a method, right? And so let's apply the method read line. You can still call it function, same thing. And so I'm going to use this name, the name of the object, the, file, the name of the variable that's referenced in the file object, which is names file, and then I'm going to call the method or the function read line. And what this is going to do is it's basically going to read the very first line a call. It's going to read this line, and once it's done, it's going to move the position, the read position from this current position. To the ver to the beginning of the next line, and wait for you to call read line again before it reads the, the next line. And so when it reads the line a call, before it moves, when it reads a line, basically it's 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 storing this line here, the value, the content of this line. It, it th this function returns it, it returns it, and so we need a place to store it. So when you call read line, it re it reads this first line and returns that value, and so we need a place to store it. So I'm going to create a variable. I'm going to call it line. And I'll store it in another line. So line, the very first time we call read line, it's going to read a call and store a call here. And then it's going to move the position from the end of this line, the read position from the end of this line to the beginning of this line. And so when we call read line again, it's going to read nana. It's going to read nana and return it. And when it's done, it's going to move the position to the beginning of the next line. When we call read line again, it reads LC. And then it returns LC. Okay. And so what do we want to do with line? Now, anytime you call a read line function and it returns an empty string, that tells you that the file contains no, no more lines. For example, after it's done, done reading Asante, it's going to read the position, sorry, it's going to move the position from the end of Asante, okay, the, the end of this line, to the next line and wait for you to call read line again. Now, at this point, if the read line, the, the, the read position is right here, and you call relearn again. It's it's trying to read nothing. You're basically reading reading nothing. And in that case, if it if it's if there's nothing there and it's, and you call read line, because there's nothing here, it's going to return an empty string, which means there are no more lines. And so, in any time you call read line and it returns an empty string, it tells you it's an it's an indication that the file is done. It has no more content, right? Or you've reached the end of the line. And so, let's create a while loop to check. Let's create a while loop to check first. Well, a while, a while loop to, to keep, oops, I'm sorry. Let's create a while loop to keep, right? Let's create a while loop to keep reading from the, reading the lines until the, you know, there are no more lines. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and create a while loop and make sure that um, I'll, I'll say while line, okay, while the content of line is not equal to, now the exclamation sign means not. <clears throat> so while the content of line is not equal to an empty string, right? Because if you call read line and it, it returns an empty string, that shows you or that tells you that there are no more lines to read, or the file is done, you know, processing all the lines, and you 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 it's reached the end of the of the file. <clears throat> and so if if the line, if the content of line is not equal to an empty string, then that means that it's equal to something. It's it's equal to something. It has there's a line that it was able to read. Right, and so if there's a line that it was able, you, 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 the program was able to read, then we're going to do something with that line. But the purpose of this program is to ba basically keep track of um, how many lines that we read, right? So let's create a variable, right, right before we enter the while loop. Let's create a variable. Just add some spaces here. Let's create a variable right before we enter the while loop and call it number of lines. Number of lines is basically the variable we're going to use to keep track of. The number of lines. I'm going to initialize it to zero. 
init um, initially, right? Because before the program starts, we've read zero lines, right? And then once we, we read a line, we, we read a valid line and make sure that it's not empty. We add one to number of lines each time. And so we read a line, right? And we first have to make sure that that line is not equal to an empty string because if it's, if it's equal to an empty string, that means that there's no, there's no content, right, on that line. There's no content. So if the line is not equal to an empty string, that means it contains something. So in that case, we have one line, right? So let's go ahead and increase number of lines by one. So number of lines is going to be equal to what's already stored in number of lines plus one, which means that if number of lines contains zero the very first time, if we read a line and line is not equal to an empty string, meaning it contains something, we have a line. And so let's add one. So basically, it's going to be zero plus one, which all gives you one, and you're storing one in number of lines. Okay, and when we are done, we have to read the next line, and by re you know we have to read the next line by calling read line again. Okay, this while loop, if we don't if we don't call um, read line again, it's still going to be using this line when it comes back up anytime here to check line. It's still going to be dealing with the content of this line this line variable, which is pretty much going to be the first line, the very first line I call. 